We don't have our clapper, but usually we just say, uh, Trixie and Candy getting in drag, so. Maybe. No, Trixie Muse and Candy Mattel getting in drag. Oh. Hi, I'm Trixie Mattel, and welcome back to the channel. Let's just get into it. We have Candy here today. Yay! And we're both little ball highlighted. <gasps> Representation! Do you I, love being bald? I love it. I feel like I look like a criminal. <laughs> and there's something you really- You think it's the hair? Well, <laughs> and there's something about that I really love. We're gonna glue our brows down and be right back. We don't have brows. I just like, I flatten them down oh. with lash glue and just like draw them in. Oh. Okay, we're gonna glue our brows down and be right back. Yeah. Today's video is sponsored by Switchcraft. Now it's no secret that I, Trixie Mattel, love video games and I'm glued to my phone. So I love Switchcraft. It's a fabulous mobile game. It's gemstones, it's puzzles, it's witchcraft. It's LGBTQIA plus representation. It's available on your device. It's wonderful. So you take on the role of a witch at Pindle Hill, which is the world's top academy for witchcraft. Play your way through hundreds of match three levels while you slowly unravel a mystery. It all starts with the disappearance of your best friend, which consequently, there's a few friends I would like to have disappear. Along the way, you'll find unique characters, a gripping story, and perhaps a little romance. It's pretty easy to play too. You just uh, swap gems to match three of the same color. The best part is your choices in the game determine the outcome of the story. I'm a big video gamer and I love when the way I play changes the end of the game. Download Switchcraft now using the link below and unlock the magic mystery. And back to the video. All right, we're back, we have brows on. Miss Candy was telling us, we were talking about how much we love drugstore. Mm -hmm. Tell them why. I love drugstore because when you're on the road, you, you've spoken about this before, there is no mall near you. There's no Mac store, Sephora, and if there is, it's so far away. So to go out of your way for a 40 minute drive to go to the mall, it's like, girl, that's impossible. I'm gonna go to my local CVS. Yeah, Dwayne my, Reed. My Dwayne Reed, my CVS. You know, I've never been in a Dwayne Reed. What's the tea of the Dwayne Reed? A Dwayne Reed is just like a CVS. Uh -huh. But CVS has more uh, drag friendly stuff. Dwayne Reed is just more like a straight version of CVS. <laughs> Dwayne Reed is like the, the, the uh, metamorphosis of you're... drag. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! The Dwayne Reed is the metamorphosis of drugstores. Holy shit. If we're being honest, uh -huh. I feel like I know you because I did Pit Stop. I got paid to Ooh. watch. <laughs> I got paid to watch your season, which was one of my favorite seasons of all time, by the way. Is it really? Yes, you girls turned it out. I mean, I wanted any one of you to win. I was so excited. Thank you. I wanted any one of me to win too. Um, <laughs> Dwayne Reed is the metamorphosis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I? You are so good at TV. Thank you. You know, you gave it to the girl. The thing is, I grew up watching trash reality television show, and like I always said, growing up, I want to be on TV because I enjoy entertaining people. That's what I do. Is I enjoy the attention. We're drag queens. If you don't enjoy attention, you're. A Hello. It's so like when the drag queens get on TV and they're like, I started drag to change lives and make a difference. I said, you wanted attention and drinks, you bitch. Uh-huh. And you know it's the tea. You wanted a drink ticket and that's how you came out to the gig tonight. You wanted to pretend to sing a number for your little friends on a Monday. That was what the tea was. Pretend to sing. No, truly there are times where I take an edible at home and I watch Drag Race and I'm like, we're watching men or women in wigs lip syncing for judges to stay in a competition to win a crowd for being the best in a wig. Like what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, you know what, it is funny because I mean, ha winning Drag Race, which you've completely disregarded, huh. was one of the greatest things of uh, my lifetime. However, sometimes I am like, you're not Simone Biles, bitch. <laughs> you won some stupid. It is. It's stupid in the best way. Yeah, winning stupid. Drag Race is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with this cover girl outlast foundation. Wait, is that full coverage? Yeah. Work. Do you think I have a question? Do you think when Cover Girl by RuPaul came out, do you think that Cover Girl, the company, loved it or were they like, oh shit, there's a gay guy singing the word cover girl? It was probably the latter. Yeah. For sure. Because the world wasn't as accepting as they are now. No. Now everyone's a drag queen. I was on the highway in New York City the other day and there was an ad, a huge billboard in Harlem for uh uh what the, what is that place where you store shit? Uh, storage, duh. And Sugar Cane was just posted up on this huge billboard on the side of the highway. Oh yeah. Amazing. Oh, in my yeah. head I was like, 
But what does that have to do with, with the storage? Because <laughs> drag queens have shit. Can I ask a question about your makeup? Yeah. You have a very strong brow. Yeah. How did you, it's almost like the anchor of your face. It's like the thing of your face. How did mm. you think of that? So when I first started drag, I used to glue them down. I was doing the pearl brow. It was around season seven when everyone was doing the metallic in the little front. And then when season eight came out, I saw Naomi on Drag Race. So I was like, You're like, let me do something. I was like, hmm, let me try this out. It was also summer in New York City and I was kind of tired of gluing down my brows because I sweat way too much. It really fits your face. How did you Thank like you. It? No, so um, I saw Naomi and I was like, um, I'm gonna try that out. And then it worked. I love a strong brow because it reminds me of like Brooke Shields. I like to look like a brat doll. Big lips, bushy brows, like squinty you eyes. Like, like a doll. Or a sex doll, either one. You can still f a brat doll, believe me. Uh, you can f anything if you try. I have a question. <laughs> the sugar gypsy called I have a question. Cause I just, <laughs> I think, especially when I was doing pit stop, I thought about you girls so much. And think about it, I saw the season so far before everyone else. And I would just sit there and think, I knew all this was happening way before I even saw it. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are people gonna think of these people? You were really not afraid to tell people what you think about your <laughs> No. And it's really impressive. Thank you. No, you know, the thing is, I, I think now a lot of the girls go into drag race like really terrified about what the fans might uh, say about them. Uh, first of all, let me say this. After the season is done, no one gives a shit. No. So when you go on there, take advantage of your time and you know, make some good TV. By the way, look at this coverage. Cover girl all last. You don't color correct? No, I don't have much of a beard. Oh, word. My whole life is very easy. I love that for you. This is my eyeliner. I know it freaks everyone out the first time. <laughs> Wow. When I first met Bob the Dry Queen, I went to her house and I was getting ready for a gig and she was watching me do this part of the makeup and she was like, what kind of Batman? Like she had never seen. She was like, what are you doing? I said, this is my eyes. <laughs> she was like, I thought you were painting like a like a mask for like a robbery. And I'm like, no. <laughs> there is something about being bald that people think you're a robber though because at that CVS down the street, they watch me like a hawk. <clears throat> I love it. We're all born naked and the rest is bald. Delete it bald. <laughs> Delete it bald. <laughs> Let's see, I have the Team Trixie palette. It's so cute. <gasps> Pastels, baby. Fine. No. Yes, and I really want to do some like big blown out, I don't know what, maybe a green? I'm gonna put on this big. I'm gonna use this Ampose and this flipping out. I'm gonna do big green crazy eyes. Let's just get in drag for once. I think I might even put glitter on. I don't know why. I just oh. feel like doing like a big blown out blue eye today. I think it's important for people to remember that eyebrows are sisters. Not twins. Girl. In fact, sometimes they're neighbors. Sometimes they've never met. You know what? And today, mine are on two different planets, so. <laughs> My eyebrows are often like, maybe they took an elevator together once. They live in the same building. Yeah. They've seen each other in the trash room. You are such a good makeup artist. Oh, thank you. Underrated makes it sound like people don't talk about it, but you know in every season, I think there's somebody who's like a great, great makeup artist. Mm -hmm. But I guess your season had several really good makeup it, artists. My, okay, we had some really great girls on there. Did you live for Jada in the parking lot? I At lived. the finale? I lived. <laughs> it was so <laughs> Jada won Drag Race on a Zoom call. And then for the final year, she got to go sell bubbly in the parking lot, was it? The, yeah, she was, uh, yeah. It's so sickening. I love Jada. You know, she and I go way back because we're both from Milwaukee. I, Jada is my girl. She's every, another obscenely good makeup artist. We were together on the Halloween tour and I would watch her get ready. It was like Rosé, me and her. And me and her would be over here pretty pretty. And we'd be like looking at Rosé like, <laughs> I love Rosé. To be honest, on Pit Stop we talked a lot of shit. Everybody from- Can I just say, Pit Stop is the most gut-wrenching, <laughs> nerve-wracking. That episode with you and Violet doing the ball <laughs> lives rent-free in my <laughs> mind. Girl, people don't know this. You know, everybody was like, wow, she really went in. Whatever, I'm not the host of the Pit Stop. I love it. Yeah, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but I don't currently work for the Pit Stop. It took three edits to get that episode to a place where the network was like, she's, it's too mean. She's going too hard. It sounds like she hates them. <laughs> No, 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 it's just no. But I was living because you know what? If I was on the pit stop, I know that I would be just as mean, if not more. Yeah. You know how like watching drag is, you're like, well, I would have done this. And Even the like, who don't do drag are like, I would have never done that. Yeah. But you would have never done it because you don't do drag. So you would have never been there, okay? Hello. People don't watch American Idol and say how they would have sung it. They don't watch Top Chef and say oh. how they would have cooked it. But they watch Drag Race and say how they would have done drag, done which drag. is so funny. Weird. We'll let you know when we want to know what non-drag queens think of drag. We will let you know. <laughs> Can I ask, uh, what do you learn about yourself watching yourself on television? Oh my God, the first few episodes, I'm re-watching season, season 13 now, and the first few episodes, 
avant -tart. I was like, oh my God, girl, shut the f*** up. You're like, I'm going in, sis. I was like, you're really letting her have it, aren't you? And then like towards the end of the season, I was like, okay, like, I can see why you're like, why I like you so much, me to myself. But at the beginning, I was like, oh my God, girl. So this is the Derma Blend Professional Leg and Body uh, Buildable Liquid Body Foundation. It's full coverage, it dries down matte. Do you use body makeup? The Sally Hansen like, uh, oh, spray. like spray, the, yeah, I love that. Everybody hates me, I'm P Pit Stop and Queen of the Universe because body makeup, I'm the body makeup police. If it shows and you're on television, you better it, have yeah, makeup on it. Absolutely, or at why? least the glitter spray or something, girl. Yeah, why would you paint your whole head one color? and then not paint the body to match. That is so <gasps> foolish. How do you feel about the All Alone in the VIP living on? Honestly, she's thriving. Who would have known that that meme would have like, every time it goes away, it's like again, again, again. I would never forget, it was New Year's Eve, because I was filming my audition tape of 13, and I think you, Alaska, and uh, a few other queens have posted like a photo <laughs> of like sitting on, and I was like, I was like, I was like, why is all this happening? And I was living. So then me and Alaska made the song, which came out the perfect time because we filmed the video three days before I went to go film a Drag Race. Oh, work. Which well, you, you did that before Drag Race. Wow, yeah, I yeah. So we, we did the song and then I flew out to LA, filmed the music video for sitting on the VIP, flew back to New York, had a day to pack and flew back to LA for Drag Race. Not great, not ideal. Not the most smartest thing to do. I also use cover girl concealer. Um, I live. Yeah, I, I used live. to use the color girl concealer. I moved on to something much more thicker, but for my bronzer, or I guess contour, I use the uh, Instant Age Rewind. Bitch, that is one of the best concealers I've ever I've used. I've never used this before. It's gaggy. And the applicator is gaggy. I live. Would you do an all-stars? Yeah. Would you wear another hat and the another little beret in the interviews? I would, I wanna, I wanna do like, the upgraded version. Yeah, like a fancy version. Uh-huh. Drag to me was like summer camp. Mm. I loved Drag Race. They were a little more nicer with us because it was COVID, so like it was truly like summer camp. So I loved it, I had a great time. I love doing television, I don't love competing. Have you done uh, Celebrity? No. Celebrity is so fun because you get to do Drag Race, but <clears throat> it's, not your, it's not your win. Yeah. You help them get ready and then you, it's so fun because it's not personal. It's not, no one judges you. If you ever get to do celebrity, drop everything and do it. It was the most fun I've ever had on Drag Race. For yeah. Sure. I gotta get into this, this, this. By the way, I think you look crazy, look at me. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my makeup is, um. I look crazy till the very end. I feel until you put on the lash and the lip. It's over, it's bad. And maybe sometimes maybe even a wig. <laughs> and <laughs> even then, and then even sometimes then. it's a filter. <laughs> Sometimes it's a drink. I'm gonna ask you a question that I I want like a real answer and I'm only asking because on television, on Drag Race, I was perceived as someone who was a complete pushover who could never be in a fight. Uh -huh. But do people expect you when they meet you in the club and stuff to like be mean to them? Is that real? Oh my goodness, yes. No, the amount of times I hear people like, I will never forget, I went to the UK uh -huh. and a certain promoter over there, the first thing they said to me was, oh, don't hit us. I don't even know you. What? Don't hit us? I was like, what are you? You're like, now I might, bitch. Now I might, yeah, no. It's, I either hear like that a lot or like, oh my God, I thought you were such a fucking bitch. Although the one that I love is in half last night at WeHo. I fucking hated you. Girl, all. girl. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to you. Oh my God, I hated you. I fucking hated you on your what season. Is, I, oh my God, I hated you. I'm not keen on you right now. Wait, and then this kid last night was like, I hated you. And then he goes, I don't know how that makes you feel. Oh, Thank sir, you. get away from me. It makes me feel great. Thank you. <laughs> I love it, thank you. But it's interesting because, okay, so during the season, I was one of the main girls to be trending on Twitter, but like not for like the nicest reasons. It would be like 48 hours, Candy was trending on Twitter for like the very- And you're like, and you're like, oh God. Like, it's not it, because they're throwing me a parade. It's, it's, no, it wasn't. Let me tell you something. <laughs> My Drag Race journey was one of the hardest things to endure, not because of Drag Race fault, because I, like I said, I love Drag Race. And the team and everyone there treated me so, so nice. And they always checked up on me to see how I was doing. Every time you trend on Twitter, they're like, are you okay? Like, oh, fully. Have you ever gotten one of these? I don't know if you've ever been canceled or anything, but um, sometimes <laughs> they give, hey, how are you? I'm like, I'm good, good. Have you been on Twitter today? <laughs> That's never good. Have you been on the internet yet? 
No. You why? Know, is something why? great happening? No. Yeah, you you had a different experience than most people because it it people... was wild because when we left filming, everyone there fully thought everyone, myself, the queens, everyone thought I was gonna be like fan favorite number one at the time. And I was like, okay, I believed it. And I, I don't think I've ever spoken about this. The response was the complete opposite. Uh I was so confused. Why? And I was like, what am I doing wrong that people are not getting? Or like, am I coming off too strong? Are people not used to seeing someone as real as me on Drag Race? And like the reality was that they weren't because there hadn't been anyone as real as me to have grace of screens of Drag Race that would just like tell you, to you how it is. And it's not in a way of like, oh, I'm here to have confrontation with you because I don't, I like to have fun and laugh and like kiki and just have, have a good time. Uh -huh. And like, I always tell people, like, if you watch the show back and see how much the girls actually loved me, like, doesn't that tell you something? That, like, those girls like me enough to, like, want it, want me to still be there. So, like, why do you dislike me? But it was a battle the whole season, and me and Simone did the final two lip sync. Which, and which Britney song was it? It was the To The World End. To The World, oh, what a great song. Oh, such a great song, but they were like, you seem so down on that final lip sync, like, what happened? I was like, and, like, the reality is, I didn't want to have any chances of winning the show because of the backlash that I would have received. Wow. So I was like, you know what? I'm just, not that I'm going to throw it. I'm going to go up there, represent for my country, pull out the flag, have a good time. But like, I don't want to like come anywhere close, like even near to winning Drag Race because the backlash would be insane. Yeah, it's worse sometimes. It is. Also, not to take away from Simone, because obviously Simone did fucking amazing. No, f her. And let's say it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's been on the channel. Hi, Simone. Hey, Simone. And when you lose, every conversation starts with, you were so good. I wanted you to win. The when amount you of win, every conversation is about, did you deserve it? But the same conversations happen. You get the same opportunities as second, third, fourth place. It doesn't matter. But interestingly enough, now that the show's over, Everyone's nice. Everyone, I go everywhere now and they're like, you're such a fan favorite, which is, yes. and and every time I have a show, my shows are sold out, my shows are packed, sold out shows, amazing. And I'm like, it's such a weird territory for me because I didn't experience that during my season. I, if, if we're being analytical, I think you really have the audience that like Alyssa, Shangela have, you really have, the gay boys really turn up for you. And the gay boys I think are the hardest audience. Mm -hmm. And they love you. Yeah, no, they-, they The young girls love drag. Those are, they're always gonna love you. Yeah. But like the gay boys are the ones who kind of like watch a drag show with their arms crossed. Uh huh. And since you're a good performer and you're good on television, that's what they want. They, yeah, I've been I've been very lucky, very blessed where everything's kind of been like a, a 180 from the season. Um, And I, my God, the opportunities I've gotten to do, I've gotten to tour everywhere. And just like the, the, like the one year I have off the show, it's really been like wild. Did you live when we said Candy Moose? Rose, Simon, love Simon, and, and got me. Got me. I was like, I don't know if this is on purpose, but. By the way, there's story producers on Pit Stop, and they just let me mispronounce things, and no one says anything. <laughs> so f those hoes, honestly. So at one point, I do want to host Pit Stop. At some point, I think only winners do it. That's not true. It might be true. Vanilla. Yeah. Right. Well, that was before they only had winners. I couldn't do this season because of the Trixie Motel. And they asked me who should do it, and I said Monet, and they picked Monet, which I love Monet. I love, let me say something. And the exchange rate was so lit, I was like, give her pit stops. I love Monet, but it is Monet and Bob, they are my like obsession. Obsession. And, and Bob is one of the nicest people. Bob Lily, well. Because <laughs> she she hosted uh, like two or three dates on the Halloween tour after Violet busted her ass. Um, <gasps> That's right, Humpty Dumpty fell off the leer. <laughs> She's okay it was, now. It was, yeah, it was bad. Were you but scared? She's good. Me and Plessy were on the side of the stage watching it. Uh -huh. And we were just like, oh my God. It looked so painful. I felt so bad. She was so high up in the air too. It's, I know, I saw her do her show a little more me in Los Angeles and it's magic. Hi, Violet. And she doesn't watch this video, but no. <laughs> hi, Violet. I would love to have her on the channel actually. Violet, come on. Violet, I saw her do her aerials live several times, probably five times in my life. And every time my heart stops. I'm afraid for her up there. It is. I'm afraid yeah. for her. I'm using my one size powder. I'm using my one size powder foundation. That is fierce. I use this to knock off the excess powder, like bring the color back into my skin. Mama. <laughs> You wears uh, dark three. Patrick, if you're watching this, she wears dark three. Dark three, no. Patrick is always so nice and sending me stuff. I always like- I love him. I'm one of those people that like, if I really like it, I go out and buy it. And like the amount of times I go out Same. and buy Patrick's stuff oh, is yeah. wild. If it works, it works. And my mom, you gotta get the coin from yeah. me. Patrick Star. 
Sugar Pill, these are all businesses started and owned by one person. Uh huh. Support these people. It's your way of saying, I like what you're doing and I want to see what you do next. It's it's very easy. It really is that. Are you on a prayer list? You are, right? You're a prayer list? Yeah. No. Oh. Watch <sighs> I know everybody comes on here and either isn't on it and gets on it, or if they are on it, they go, I don't know, I don't open my packages. And I'm like, Jinx Monsoon just tagged a palette that came out last year of her opening the box. I can see that for her. I have a question to ask all the girls this. Who are your favorite drag queens? Who do you like if they're in town and you have a show, you're going? Oh, I my well, my number one favorite, favorite rule ever is Willem. A work. Does she know that? I think she knows that. Mm -hmm. Before I even started drag, her, Alaska, Willem, and Courtney, when they were doing the Triple A girls, mm -hmm. they came to New York and they were doing a signing at American Apparel mm -hmm. for their merchandise. And I remember um, I have a, a video dancing with Willem, and that was like my favorite thing ever. And I was always just obsessed with how blunt Willem was on season four, and just like how much of a businesswoman. Oh yeah, I, I texted her. I was doing this today, and she said we had her at the show in New York for Triple A Girls, and she was always a star. That's what she texted. She, oh, I love and her. I, yeah, she said it was the Triple A Girls show, and I said, well, somebody needed to be the star. So, <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of celebrities, uh, Paul Vitar said hello to you. Oh hi! I told her I was coming here today. She go wait. Let's. I love her. I, I met her because she and I voiced the same character on Superdrive, and I was like, they, they said, oh, you're doing Pablo's part, and I was like, well, I didn't know who she was. And I looked up, I was like, oh, she's like the Beyonce. She's right? not, wait, she, wait. Okay, baby, so let's tell me when you finish the the filming. Send the kisses with Trixie, for oh. Trixies. And wait. let me see you, I need to see you, baby. She Let is such, you. such icon. I, oh my Gorge, the voice, everything. A stallion, like seven feet tall. She is like the Beyonce of Brazil. Yeah, she is, she really is. Why? Have you been to Brazil? I have not been there yet. Girl, they nut for But drag. I love, I love their culture, I love their country. All right, I finished my eyes. I used flipping out and pose in this, so pretty, and I did some of the perfect tan on the lid. And I'm gonna do some blush. I got my summer work. Blush. Well, this is my, you can see I've used mine for a while. Wow, those are big. Yeah, they're queen size. Really on fun. camera, they look so little. Oh, they're huge. Those are so big. Yeah, they're huge. Can I just say, my favorite product ever is the Stila glitter. Perlina. They are nice. Sometimes my little eyelid, my fake eyelid, it is nice because the applicator's small enough, I can just do a stripe. I mean, I go over with eyeshadow anyways, but it's it's a nice under base. You use it as a base? You use glitter as a base? Yeah, no, just like I use, I take these two from like the Kim Street palette. Oh, the like, Kim and the, um, the Kim and Plastique. The Kim Plastique, so yeah, I love good. that. Plastique's beauty, not relatable. Oh my God, <laughs> on tour, I was like, girl, get the fuck away from me. Like, don't stand by me, don't be photographed with me. I've never met her. No. No. Once I started touring solo, like I stopped. Meeting, well, I guess you stopped, stopped meeting a lot of the girls. girls. Well, yeah. also, like I guess so many seasons happen, and you're just like at some point you have to just like. Once I stopped doing the tours and doing nightclubs, I all my ways I met drag queens went away. Stop doing so nightclubs. I, I live. I love doing nightclubs. Though I mean, I still do my bar. You've been to my bar. <gasps> yes. Okay. I. You were at my bar in so Milwaukee. So once live. I was, I got. So so drunk. Yeah, they do that. Wasted. They're good. The audiences there are good. They love Dragon Milwaukee. They will show up for you, a huge star who was just on Drag Race. They'll show up for someone who hasn't been on television in five years. They just love I drag. love that. They love drag. At least you didn't have your Drag Race finale on Zoom. Mama, I would have gone through it if that was the case. It could have happened. We quarantined, gosh, for how many days? We quarantined for a week for the finale, which is one of the hardest finales to ever happen on Drag Race. Mama, with that ball. Can I just say that that Bevin number was, it was the wildest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I'm not saying it was good or bad. It was like a dream. It was it, like, <laughs> and then Jada's selling soda in the parking lot. <laughs> I love it. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, By the way, that's the tea of Drag Race. You win Drag Race, the most famous drag queen in the world, you could be selling soda in the parking lot tomorrow. Uh, hello? You guys, look at Candy's face. It's not even done yet. Look how beautiful it is. Can you show the children? Gorge. My eyes are too close together, but I love when people can connect the bottom and the top liner like that. It's so hot. Yeah. You start a makeup company tomorrow. What are you making? What's the Candy makeup line? The first thing I would do is a lip kit. Work. I love lips, I love gloss, I'm a gloss girl. I'm gonna get some glitter. I'm gonna fuck around and get glitter. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm gonna gag you right now. My favorite blush is from CoverGirl. Is it? The True Blend So Flush. Oh, I so think I've flushed? seen it on TikTok. So flushed. I've seen it on TikTok. I love you in orange blush. Work! Yes, hottie. Oh, bitch. Give it. This is the blush channel now. I, I blush everywhere. Under the chin, forehead, nose. 
<gasps> That's blush, honey. You make me look like I have no blush on. I know you might have to pile a little more. I am so gorgeous. You are. It's actually really stunning how I like love myself. it comes to like together. Have we ever met prior to this? No. Uh, I saw you once at DragCon. Once at DragCon, it was at the green room and it was like a high bye situation. It was that, it was walking by. You gave me the coldest shoulder and I kept walking. <gasps> no, so I did not. Did I really you, do that? You basically cussed at me. <laughs> I got victimized, I got bullied. Uh, you know, Tanisha Iman and I were just talking about how much of a bully you were. Yeah. I'm gonna top off my lip. This is Lollipop Lux from the Team Trixie collection. It's a super sheer pink. Look, just sheer, 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 sheer. But I love every lip to be a little pink. Do you see how the hot pink just kind of tints the lip to more of like a candy color instead of orange? So pretty. Do you know the exact moment in time I fell in love with you? When you had to lip sync on Drag Race for the first episode and you pushed play on that fucking stereo. <laughs> Pushing play on a boom box before a lip sync starts, it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I didn't even know how I even thought about that. Honestly, honestly. Like and you did it so calmly, like it was real. You weren't like a drag queen being like, oh, push play, you touch like, like it was like for your own enjoyment. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put on some lashes and some drag and we'll be right back. Look at us, the dolls. I chose this full clown look and you're in this like fucking drag race promo. <laughs> like look at, <laughs> damn. I look like a bartender and you you look like a no, I live. supermodel. It's very like little like this is your winter Barbie, your ba cozy Barbie. Babysitter's Club. I'm bedazzling. I'm at home in the 80s doing bedazzling. Uh-huh. And I love these earrings from Purple Banana, their little Barbie magazine. Oh, that's so cute. Isn't she gorgeous? Where can they follow you, Candy? <laughs> you can find me on social media, literally on every single platform under Z Candy Muse. You lucked out to get it on everything. Oh yeah, on everything. Even TikTok? Even TikTok. You can also get my merchandise on mybestjudy.com. Support the girls, please. Support the dolls. I also have a YouTube channel. It's under The Candy Muse. I haven't posted in like eight months, um, but we are getting there. I have things coming. This blush is fucking setting me free. That is so pretty. Look at it. It's like on fire. It is on fire. And you can find me everywhere at Trixie Mattel, of course. And you can shop the Team Trixie and the Team Katya collection at Trixie Cosmetics. And um, we'll see you next time. Ooh, mwah.